This is part two of the DHS EMP report video I made back in 2018. A lot has changed since I made the part one video. In this video, I'm going to show you the commercial products I purchased from EMP Shield. I've installed these products to provide protection from EMP type events. So let's get to the intro and start this video. Hi, this is Bill at Technogypsy. It has been over two years since I made part one of this video series. A lot of the delay for making part two was my frustration with the inaction and lack of interest from both the public and the government. Thankfully, a lot has changed since I made the part one video in 2018. The government and the public have finally come to realize the potential magnitude of the impact that would result from an EMP type event. This event could occur by natural circumstances, such as a solar flare or a coronal mass ejection, or it could come through the actions of an adversarial country. An Executive Order EO13865, Coordinating National Resilience to EMP, was issued on March 26, 2019, addressing EMP events. This EO helped spur private industry to create highly effective protective products. One of the premier producers of these devices is the company EMP Shield. In this video, I'm going to show you five of those products and how I've installed them. So, what is a nuclear EMP? It is defined as an event having three distinct pulses of voltage and current. The E1 pulse is the first pulse and is a result of the gamma rays released during the nuclear reaction. The gamma rays interact with the electrons and the nucleus of the atoms that make up the atmosphere. This results in the freeing of electrons from their atoms. These free electrons ionize the atmosphere, thereby causing an electric current to flow. This current can be seen as the flow of electricity through anything that acts as an antenna. All of the wires that make up our nation's electrical grid make an excellent antenna. A current produced by a nuclear EMP solar flare, or coronal mass ejection, would produce an over-voltage condition throughout the connected area. For an optimally positioned detonation at an altitude of approximately 300 miles and over the center of the U.S., it would subject the entire nation to the effects created by the E1 pulse. The E1 pulse begins at the time of the detonation of the weapon and continues until one microsecond after the detonation. The E2 pulse starts at one microsecond and continues until approximately one second after the detonation. The E2 pulse is caused by the inelastic scattering of the matter from the nuclear weapon bouncing off other matter in the atmosphere. This interaction with the matter that makes up the atmosphere will continue to ionize the atmosphere. The E3 pulse starts at approximately one second after the detonation and can continue for several minutes. The E3 pulse is caused by the nuclear detonation distorting the Earth's geomagnetic structure and the resulting bounce back as it recovers. As the magnetic lines of flux are pushed out of configuration and then back into normal configuration, electricity is generated. This flows through the atmosphere where it can be magnetically induced into an antenna. Think wires and circuit board traces. The antenna that will be most affected will be the nation's power grid, but all arrays of wiring in your house, vehicle, and devices will act as antennas and will produce a flow of electricity and potentially overvoltage conditions. So, a device that can protect you from all these events would be a prudent investment. This is where the products produced by EMP Shield come in. EMP Shield is the world's only tested and approved EMP protection technology for an entire electrical system. All their products are built to exceed military standard, MIL standard 188-125-1. The EMP Shield devices are designed to pull excess electricity from an electrical system in less than 500 trillionths of a second. The EMP Shield products are designed to protect an entire home from lightning, coronal mass ejections, power surges, and a nuclear EMP. 
all of their devices are proven and tested to Keystone compliance at a federally approved Department of Defense testing facility. The EMP Shield products were struck with over 40 EMP strikes with no impact to the device. MIL Standard 188-125-1 requires that the overvoltage spike generated from the E1 spike begin shunting 5,000 amps within 20 nanoseconds. All EMP Shield products start shunting over voltage in 500 trillionths of a second. EMP Shield products are also designed to continue protecting through the expected durations of the E2 and E3 spikes produced by a high altitude electromagnetic pulse. All devices are also UL1449 compliant and have been tested at Intertech. Please see their website at www.empshield.com for all the military certified testing and other information. So, how exactly do the EMP Shield devices work and protect all your electronics and equipment? Remember the thing about the electrical grid, wires, and circuit board traces becoming antennas? Well, the EMP Shield devices shunt or short the overvoltage coming from those antennas. These devices will see the surge and protect your electrical system. The shunning is completed incredibly fast, around 500 trillionths of a second, and the overvoltage is pulled away from your equipment before the voltage can rise enough to cause any damage. This technology is called sight speed and ensures no heat is generated within the protected device. Let's take a look at the five EMP shield devices I have here on my desk. The first one is the DC-12V-W device. It is designed to protect a 12-volt DC electrical system, such as the one found in your vehicle. The unit has an adhesive pad here on the bottom to allow simple mounting within your engine compartment. The next device is the SP-120-240-G device. It is designed to protect an AC system such as your house electrical system. This specific device is designed to protect a generator. It has two lines, L1 and L2, that connect to the hot sides of your AC device. The white wire connects to your AC neutral line. Please contact a licensed electrician to safely install this device in your system. There are two models designed to protect your solar-powered system. The first one is the DC-90-120V-W device. This device is designed to protect a low DC voltage solar panel array where your total voltage coming from the array does not exceed 120 volts. Since most solar panels have a maximum output of around 21 volts, you would use this device if you connected up to five solar panels in series. I connect my solar panels in parallel so as to increase the current, or amps. The parallel configuration keeps a maximum output voltage in the low 20s range. This device works well for this environment. The second one is a DC-600V-MAX-W device. This is the big brother to the DC-90-120V-W device. It is designed to protect a high DC voltage solar panel array where your total voltage coming from the array does not exceed 600 volts. This would be used in large solar panel arrays where you have a lot of solar panels connected in a combination series parallel configuration so as to provide high DC output voltage and current. The last device is the ANT-S200 device. This device has an SO239 connector on each end and a ground lug on the side. It is designed to go in line on the connection between your ham radio and the antenna. This device can protect your radio with up to a 200 watt radio frequency or RF power output level. Now that I've shown you the devices, let's head outside and I'll show you how I've installed them on a generator, truck, solar panel array, and ham radio system. This is one of the 17-foot communications trailers I developed for a client. As you can tell, 
It has a large antenna mast up on the top. This is a 47 foot mast. And we have a 6KW Onan commercial generator sitting on this trailer. This generator is designed to meet federal park standards, so it's very, very quiet as a diesel generator. Got a 25 gallon diesel tank sitting over there on the back end. And what I did is I put on a EMP shield SP120 slash 240G designed specifically to protect a generator. There are two lines on this. There's a line one that's black, line two is red. So that's your two hots to the two breakers. You have your neutral, which is white. Then of course the ground, which is green. The EMP shield SP120 240G completely protects this generator from solar flares, electromagnetic pulse or EMP, and lightning. So let's take a look at the other ones that I have installed on my other devices. All right, now that we've looked at the trailer installation on a generator, let's take a look over here at an installation on a truck, a standard vehicle. This is using the MP Shield 12VW module. It's very easy to install. We're gonna pop the hood here in just a second, take a look at it, and let's get into it. So let's look under the hood here and take a look at how you install the MP Shield DC-12VW unit. The installation of the EMP Shield model DC-12W is really pretty straightforward. I had a hard time on this Rebel on finding a place to, to put it, and it has an adhesive back on the back of the unit. I just went ahead and mounted it on top of my fuse box. After that, there's only three simple wires to connect. You have your hot wire, which has a fuse protect. It goes to the positive of the battery. You have your black wire that is the negative wire. It goes to the negative terminal over here on the battery. And then you have a green wire, which is the ground wire that you connect to a ground that is sitting on the vehicle on one of the standard ground points. Now that we've seen the installation of the EMP shield into a vehicle, let's go over and look at my solar powered system I have on my trailer. Now that we've looked at the trailer with the generator on it and the truck with the EMP shields, I'm gonna show you what I've done here to my Skywarn trailer. Now this trailer has multiple capabilities of power. It's got two solar panels up on top, so it has a full solar charge controller. It also has shore power on it, if we, so you can plug it into the AC to charge the batteries, and the onboard batteries are 400 amp hour. So let's take a look inside of this to see how I've implemented the EMP shield to protect the solar panel system. This is the inside to my Skywarn trailer. Up above, I have two 160 watt solar panels. Those two solar panels feed into my electrical system. Over onto this side, I have a 400 amp hour battery pack down in here. We come over here, of course this is a power transfer switch, and here's my EMP shield. This is the EMP shield DC90-120V slash W. There's only three simple wires that come from it. This is just like the one in the vehicle with a red, a black, and a green. The red goes to the positive side of the solar array going into the solar charge controller. The black goes into the negative side of the solar array going into the charge controller. The charge controller then feeds in the rest of the system, comes over and drives the whole DC side, provides charging to my 400 amp hours of batteries which are stored back down under here. I have a 2000 watt pure sign inverter here. This is a power transfer switch that can differentiate between AC shore power coming in and power running off of the DC to AC inverter 
that is then piped through the rest of this full trailer internally. Everything is fully protected with the uh, ground fault interrupters, GFI type of circuits. Very simple uh, type system and implementation of tying in the EMP shield of the solar charge controller to protect the solar panels up on top of the roof of this trailer. Well, that's pretty simple on how I have the EMP shield device connected into my solar charge controller. We'll go over this trailer in a, another full series of videos because this thing is, I think you'll be impressed with it. So let's go on out and take a look at the last EMP shield devices I have installed, which are on my antennas. So I hope you enjoyed the looks inside of my Skywarn trailer. It's a very sophisticated system. Get the lock back onto that. And now we're gonna go over and take a look at the antenna protection system that I've set up. So now let's take a look at how I've protected my antennas with the EMP shield devices. When you come down here, these are my three EMP shield units that I have because I have an antenna array up there. So if you take a look up there, you'll see it. All right, so what I have is I have one on the 70 centimeter antenna. I have one on the two meter antenna. I have one on the 1.2 gig antenna. And then I have one that's underneath this porch that is tied onto my HF dipole that's going up in the air. So now that we've looked at my antenna protection, my Skywarn trailer protection, and the generator on the trailer protection. Let's go back into the studio and finish this video. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the EMP Shield products and how I have installed them. I feel much better knowing that I am protected in the event of a nuclear EMP, solar flare, coronal mass ejection, or lightning strike. If you decide that you want to purchase any of these devices, please purchase them through the marfuglenews.com site. I have no affiliation with the site, but I know it would help them out going through their affiliate link. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel. This is Bill, the Techno Gypsy, saying 7-3 and God bless.